let's have a look on the earth back uh, again here you see the Atlantic and uh, the Atlantic crust is very new yeah. and um, where, whereas uh, these uh, plates of um, um, of these um, continental plates uh, are very old and uh, forming um, uh, these continents. Uh, Alfred Wegener has been the first who was describing uh, this effect and was showing that it is like a puzzle that that uh, on on the right side Africa and Europe fits exactly in the shelf line of uh, America on the left side. Yeah. And uh, this is explaining uh, plate tectonics and this is accepted. Yes. Well, not at his time, but later he was accepted. Today, today Alfred Wegener is totally accepted um, that uh, his idea was right. That, that means that the Atlantic is, uh, has a drift yeah. Uh, is getting bigger and we see if we look at the floor of the ocean that it uh, is uh, very exactly showing these uh, property that there is always produced new matter coming out mm -hmm. of the middle Atlantic ridge and uh, well if you look at the Pacific side uh, if the size of the earth would be the same uh, remaining the same then this couldn't happen. What we see yeah. is the same effect as on the Atlantic side, on the other, side. On the other yeah. side, and uh, this is even even more growing. Um, uh, what, what we see as well is that this line, if you follow the line where it is growing, is going through the um, countryside in California, and this is why there is, uh, it is so dangerous to live there for, because uh, a lot of uh, earthquakes could occur. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this has to do with the growing of the earth. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and you see that you have uh, the same effect of growing all around uh, the uh, South Pole so that uh, the um, continents are moving towards the North Pole and are separating slowly from the South Pole. Mm -hmm. um, this is interesting to see as well. So uh, this well one should uh, expect that it is um, on the Northern Hemisphere going to the North Pole and on the Southern Hemisphere to the South Pole. Yeah, so that we have these uh, um, separating um, regions all around the South Pole all around the Antarctic. Well, uh, we, we, we see, if we look at the seabed, we, we see this very, very clear that the Earth has to expand. And we, we know by some uh, observations that this is true. Uh, when there was the big earthquake in Japan, in Kobe, mm -hmm. for instance, there was a bridge dropping down uh, of a highway and then they wanted to um, to put the bridge back on the place but there was half a meter left mm. so that the two parts of the bridge were separated half a meter so an earthquake means it is um, uh, working very quick and then uh, this uh, is showing that uh, the two parts um, had been uh, moved in away apart, yeah. apart not okay. towards no, there's no um, what they what they call subduction you see the subduction soon is postulated uh, so that the uh, size of the earth could be the same but uh, we have not um, no proof that this subduction really really exists Maybe they, they measure about 40 centimeters each year is the earth growing in the equator and the diameter. Uh, you will see what it is exactly. I have calculated this. Uh, here you have the picture of the earth uh, given by the NASA. And they have measured from space 
and you see by the red lines where we have this movement um, and uh, it is uh, um, in this map how much it is it is about 13 up to 15 centimeter in the Pacific which is absolutely maximum of growing we have about four centimeters in the Atlantic Ridge and even some more in the Indian Ocean and um, uh, so that we can say this is uh, the expanding part which is here in red lines and on the other hand we have the uh, subduction soon in blue lines but the blue lines you you have to f first you have to find you see and there is no centimeter given so that, that they have not measured any subduction uh, in these zones well uh, if there is a movement of the plates we get we get uh, the situation that uh, the two uh, crusts are uh, touching and that we have um, the, the problem of uh, earthquakes this is very very typical but um, this doesn't uh, explain that um, uh, subduction would have to exist it's no proof about it so uh, we have to prove it let's first have a look in the journals what are the journals writing what have the scientists found out um, and the function of the exp expanding core of the earth um, a model of interaction and absorption of neutrino radiation well we have uh, some examples in the um, Bild der Wissenschaft which is a scientific uh, journal in Germany um, it was found out that one day in in the ascent earth has had only five hours mm -hmm. well if you use a, a clock of today you see uh, I can't ask somebody who, who was living in that time uh, what were uh, how quick the earth was turning but the, the earth was turning very quick that means it, it the earth has been very small because of the angular moment um, uh, the bigger the earth is becoming the slower uh, the earth will turn and uh, science has uh, published that uh, 900 million years ago one day has had 18 hours mm. so that we have some idea some proofs that the turning is getting less and less mm -hmm. and today we know that every year the turning of the earth is getting less uh, about uh, 0 0.7 seconds less than one second mm -hmm. and this is measured in the physikalisch technische bundesanstalt in braunschweig in germany um, this is the atomic clock which is used as a standard yes a clock standard in mid in, in the center of Europe and uh, so this is the uh, what, what we uh, have today as a, as a result and the question is um, uh, if it is slowed down the turning is slowing down it has to correspond with the size of the earth uh, so that we have two measurements the one the size we know is about 19 centimeter in the circumference of the earth what the earth is growing 19 19 19 mm -hmm. centimeter about and on the other hand we we know that we have uh, not yet one second uh, um, what uh, the turning of the earth is getting less per year and we have to control by these two results what happens with the earth and probably it's not a steady growth but depending how much neutrinos they catch sometimes yeah. some years more some years less so it's it's an average anyway mm -hmm. so some years we have more um, neutrinos uh, used and so the uh, the change is quicker and uh, sometimes it's uh, s slower okay well this is the situation and we have to calculate because there are uh, two possibilities uh, one possibility is that the density 
of the earth is getting less and this is why the earth is growing and the other uh, solution could be that the mass is getting more but then we have to answer where is the mass coming from mm. first let's calculate and I said this is the wrong calculation but let's try it anyway because if the mass would be constant a lot of scientists are following this idea because mm -hmm. they say then I don't have any problem if the mass <laughs> is constant yeah. that means the density is reducing we are able to calculate this uh, what, hap what does it mean if the density is constant then we find out that for 0 0.7 seconds per year the, the earth would grow 47 centimeters per year which is absolutely too much it's only 19 centimeter uh -huh. yeah. and this is why this answer is wrong well Paul Dirac even said that this should happen but um, because he said the, the, the universe is growing and this is why the system has to grow as well but mm -hmm. uh, and the density is getting less but this is not true this is not correct and um, here we see that um, uh, this uh, result is wrong. Uh, okay, let's um, start again. <laughs> now we calculate um, that with a constant uh, density. That means the mass is uh, changing and uh, um, with a constant density the mass has to be calculated. And the mass is up to uh, the radius as well so that we get another um, relation and if we measure uh, what uh, on the circumference of the earth uh, will happen we get 19 oh, centimeter exactly. which yeah. is exactly what has been measured from space mm -hmm. so that uh, we are sure by a very short and very simple calculation that the uh, idea of a constant density is wrong and that it uh, the mass is getting more well there are even more um, ideas behind because we know that the dinos dinos uh, so sources um, dinosaurs uh, yeah they uh, they have had 80 tons for instance mm. uh, and uh, we know that the bones are too small so that they couldn't uh, survive stand the gravity from today yeah, but when so it, was it is lower gravity because the earth was smaller yeah. they could yeah. Yeah. Um, well there could be as well an impact which is uh, uh, producing mass as well so that these ideas could come together but uh, anyway um, the mass has changed this is mm -hmm. this is what we, we what we see and uh, it, the result corresponds with the measurement. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what, what are the results of this calculation? We can see that um, if we use the uh, facts, uh, the ascent Egypt have found out, which have measured the turning of the earth very exactly. They have measured very exactly how many days one year has had so mm -hmm. that we are able to um, if you if you compare this with uh, the time of a year of today mm -hmm. then the average over the last 2300 years the earth was growing only 5.5 centimeters per year mm -hmm. which is less than uh, the growing is today which is uh, 19 centimeters per year yes. that means the earth is getting more neutrino radiation actually now than uh, in the last 2300 years could it be because it's bigger and they can collect more so this happens anyway that uh, that the is getting bigger and bigger and is collecting more and more but um, it is there there have to be other effects as well uh, to be considered that because of the neutrino radiation is not constant mm -hmm. at that time so today we have a lot of tons as we see here per year 
uh, which uh, are um, changing uh, the the uh, earth and uh, and we can say that it uh, the earth is growing three times quicker than in the last 2300 years in average and the gravitational force is increasing as well so this is what what we have to consider let's go back to the neutrino idea the neutrino no, the no, no, nobel prize was given for the neutrino research in 2002 uh, as it was uh, uh, explained in in this film to Pro professor koshiba and to one of the original um, scientists davis junior um, and a third one was uh, has nothing to do with neutrino radiation that was uh, an Italian scientist, Giordano. Um, so let's uh, have a look what is the opinion of the science community. They said, well, until now, we know that, uh, that the neutrino is a fiction, it's a hypothesis, uh, because Pauli has said, well, uh, the balance of the beta decay is not fulfilled, the law of uh, balancing the energy. And this is why I need something which is um, supporting the energy and the impulse to this beta decay. This was, uh, so this particle was only uh, a hypothesis, mm -hmm. was not proved. Um, some physicists have this idea till today. Um, but you see a particle without charge and without mass. How has this energy has this particle energy and impulse? Th this is a problem. If it is only a fiction, okay, but now uh, it has been um, honored by a Nobel Prize. And the Nobel Prize you get only for a fact, not for a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And this is why they have um, um, awarded the uh, the proof, the experimental proof of uh, neutrino radiation, and uh, so that this idea that it is a fiction is not real anymore. Nobody is claiming that any longer. Yeah. Good. But even before, if they built neutrino traps, they must have been convinced, otherwise they wouldn't have got so much money for it. Yeah. Okay, uh, so now we have problems. The, one of the problems is if the neutrino has become reality, uh, and as we know it is an oscillating particle, we need, a, we need a solution for this. And my solution is, that the, the, the neutrino is something like a field vortex, uh, vortex that is oscillating between the properties of an electron and of a positron, a positive charged antimatter particle. That means, in average, the charge between plus and minus is zero, and the average in the mass. It's zero as well because it's some, one time it is a, a matter and next time it is antimatter. But you see, um, uh, the effective value of charge and mass are not zero. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the physicists of today have no measurement device to mm -hmm. measure the effective value. You know, uh, if you compare it uh, with the uh, AC of our uh, power supply of our network, then if you measure it with a DC measurement device, it's zero voltage. Mm -hmm. But if you measure it on and, and change to AC, then you measure 230 volt. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say if a physicist is measuring only the uh, average, the DC, uh, DC uh, value, um, he only has to put his fingers in, in, in the blood, you see, and then <laughs> he will feel that there is something. This is very, very interesting to learn, you learn by do, learning by doing, you see, that the effective value 
is different. Mm. But the effect of value you only get if you have a, a, an instrument, if you have a measurement device um, that goes into resonance with these 50 hertz. Mm. And here we have high frequencies. Mm. And so it's very, very difficult to, to bring a measurement device in resonance with these high frequencies. But anyway, if the effect of value is not zero, then, then we have energy and we have impulse. And this gives an answer. Because these are oscillating particles. And I can say that our solution is that we have free energy. Mm -hmm. That the neutrino power is supporting us with energy from, the, from space, from the field, at any time and everywhere present and available energy resource. This mm -hmm. is absolutely the perfect solution. And well, that's what we humans are doing every day. We collect that. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> you see, uh, I hope that we are able to derive this fact yeah. later on. But the problems are great. This was only the first problem. It's it's uh, solvable. But uh, you see, we have to we have to use our brain. The second problem is that the neutrino has. Uh, some mass. Well, the scientists, they have measured with this big um, uh, neutrino detector, they have mis measured uh, mass, that the neutrino has, has mass. And we know by the uh, uh, theory of Einstein, by the theory of relativity, that if a particle has mass, then the speed of the particle has to be less than the speed of light. Yes. On the other side, we know that the biggest sources for, for energy are the black holes, especially in the center of our galaxy. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we even come to the conclusion that the whole galaxy is only existing and all the stars are only shining because there is a black hole in the center, mm -hmm. because they are supported from this black hole. And this is what Tesla said. Mm -hmm. So that we have two opinions and how to find a solution? Well, uh, the solution could be that the water in these big tanks in the Kamiokande detector are slowing down uh, these uh, neutrino radiation so that the water is, is taking the energy from the neutrino into, into the water. Mm -hmm. And the movement is getting more in, in the water. Mm -hmm. So the, the rest mass, which uh, has been uh, measured, um, uh, is because if they have slowed down the neutrino, then if they have a speed less than speed of light, then they are measurable, but mm -hmm. not before. Mm -hmm. But the answer is, if you measure only if you have then slowed down, then you have measured your measurement device and not this <laughs> not the property of of the neutrino and um, concerning to your definition it's not called neutrino any longer because it's slower than light yeah it they, they are slowing them down and then they measure it mm -hmm. so my explanation is oh sorry my explanation is that the wa mo water molecules, which are dipoles, they are oscillating in resonance with the neutrino. The neutrino delivers energy to the water molecules because if the neutrino is changing from plus to minus and back again, then the, then the dipoles, the water dipoles, are following these movement. Mm -hmm. So they turn. And, and if they turn, the dipoles, the, the neighbors are turning as well, and so you get a movement in, in the water, and uh, this energy which is coming from the neutrino at the end is in the water. And the neutrino is slowing down uh, to a speed less than speed of light, and then it is materializing. Therefore people like to be close to water. Maybe. <laughs> you see, snatching uh, some energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could be, but but first of all, uh, what does it mean? The neutrino becomes either an electron or 
a positron, an antimatter type particle. And um, if it is, if, or if we have electrons in water, we know what they do. They attack the water dipoles and they are cracking them to hydrogen and oxygen. That means we have uh, water fission and uh, uh, or electrolysis. But mm -hmm. done by the neutrino, this is why I call it neutrino lysis. Mm -hmm. Nobody is talking about we have photolysis, we have electron, uh, electrolysis, but here we have neutrino lysis. Very important to know that this is possible because there is always the, the question uh, unexplained where uh, was the oxygen coming from? From the plants which are using the oxygen? Nobody knows where the oxygen of the earth is coming from. My answer is that it was coming from the water mm -hmm. because the water is cracking by the neutrino radiation, the gas is coming out, the oxygen uh, remains here on next to the surface and the hydrogen is uh, going up to the ionosphere. That's always going. Interesting. So um, one part is producing um, electrons and is uh, cracking water and a small part is as well uh, remaining as an antimatter particle, as a positron and this positron is interacting with the electrons in the environment and so they decay very quick and they are producing light. It's flashlight. It's, it's a very uh, weak light um, which we call Cerenkov radiation mm -hmm. or which is detected in these big water tanks uh, and uh, if they have this light then they say or calculate how many neutrinos are involved. So this is the second problem. Now let's go to the third problem. We even have a lot of problems. Uh, next problem is that we uh, have measured in a, in a water tank, we have measured 3 billion neutrino per second per square centimeter uh, all the time. Um, but this is not enough. It's too less because we have had other experiments like um, CERN has done in the Galax experiment in, the, uh, in Italy. Uh, they have measured 66 billion neutrino per second per square centimeter. Uh, it's another system they are using. They are using gallium chloride and this gallium chloride if it is attacked, um, it's a liquid, if it is attacked by neutrino radiation then it is changing into germanium isotope which is radioactive and is decaying back to gallium chloride and this uh, radiation, uh, radioactive radiation is measured and uh, gives us an idea how many electrons um, or how many uh, neutrinos had been uh, involved. So that you can say if you want to have a Nobel Prize you don't need to give the right answer. The only You can, you can make mistakes more than 100%. You see 66 billion is much more than 3 billion. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you only have to use a lot of money so that those who pay for you uh, understand that it was the money was good for good use. Yeah. <laughs> so then you get a Nobel Prize. Yeah, or you act like Einstein, then you also get one. And Tesla never did. Tesla never got his Nobel Prize, yeah. Okay, so you see uh, Koshiba was constructing his detector under a totally wrong assumption and um, that was uh, or is the next problem the third problem 
which is not solved till today. Mm -hmm. I, ha I have an answer as well. I have an answer to all these questions. What is uh, the answer? Where is the mistake? Is it in the measurement or in the model? Well, um, I can say my solution would be that the neutrino materializes in the presence of matter, especially into matter particles and not antimatter particles. And you see, the galaxy experiment has measured the production of the electrons. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Kamiokande detector in a, in a big water tank with photomultipliers, they measure only the light and the light is produced by the antimatter. So that we have the proportion, 66 billion uh, neutrinos uh, which are producing electrons and 3 billion which are producing uh, positrons <laughs> or a relation of 96% to 4%. Yeah. This relation and this proportion is very interesting because you can follow up this proportion again if you look at the sun um, how much light the sun is producing compared to how much the, earth, the sun is growing so this relation is typical for other observations as well and even uh, how much other radiation the sun is sending to us is that the same proportion? Uh, no, you you have to um, calculate always a, a closed system, so the sun for itself, what is the sun radiating, and uh, the the situation on Earth is different. What is what is, what is, we are reaching here, but you see the the system of, of the Earth um, uh, observed by itself could have the same situation, but the light is not visible because it's inside and we only know if if uh, there is a volcanic uh, activity then we see that there is light from inside but mm -hmm. um, it's covered by the mantle and especially by the crust of the earth okay so the fourth pro problem we, we have even more we are not, <laughs> not ready you see the, the measurement of the solar no neutrino radiation at the super kamiokande at night time they have measured only half of the quantity of neutrinos than on daytime. So, what happens with these disappeared neutrinos? 50% uh, is a lot. Mm. So that we really have a problem. And one hypothesis is uh, that uh, the Earth's core has changed the property of the neutrino uh, in presence um, or present but no longer measurable it is um, uh, well they say if the property has changed if the electron neutrino has changed into a mu neutrino or tau neutrino then we need um, other measurement devices um, and we have to measure all the electron neutrinos and other measurement devices for the mu neutrinos and so on. So they are reproducing their experiments, they are repeating them uh, now with several measurement devices to find out what happens. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that uh, they will not be successful because uh, the neutrino radiation is remaining in, this, in, in the core of the Earth. The core of Making the it grow. Yeah. So uh, we need the neutrino radiation just to let the Earth grow, and uh, to uh, for, for this up to my model for this um, better decay that happens in the center of the Earth. Okay. Well, what is my hypothesis that the Earth core has absorbed these missing radiation, which is mm -hmm. neutrino power, mm -hmm. and this uh, gives as a consequence that a fusion in the earth happens and that the energy comes from the sun by this part which is radiated and which is now observed in, in, in the core of the earth. Cold fusion. It's cold fusion. Mm -hmm. 
as it is cold in the earth, in, in, in the core. It's no hot fusion. Um, the sun supplies the earth with neutrino power. You see, this is the usual uh, description or usual uh, solution of this problem. But um, the physicists of today uh, are not always using the, the simplest um, ideas. They say, well, this statement uh, cannot be proved, but it is uh, uh, honored with the Nobel Prize. And uh, so if, if it is honored, then um, it's the bag of the metal that all students have to learn uh, what they have stated. Mm -hmm. Whether it is right or wrong, no, nobody has proved. Mm -hmm. The fifth problem. The fifth problem is that uh, the failing interaction. Mm -hmm. we, we, we know that neutrinos interact very, very little. We we'll call it the weak interaction. Um, uh, and, uh, and it's working only at a very, very small distance to other particles. So the hypothesis, we know, and we even know, on the other hand, the answer uh, that uh, it could be observed. The problem is now that in both cases uh, we have a sorry we ha that in both cases we have a interaction which is not allowed <laughs> because um, it is m much more than the weak interaction allows. That means the physics anyway, the textbooks anyway, have to be renewed at this point. Mm -hmm. Whatever the, the answer uh, to these experiments will be at the end, the, the hypothesis one or two. Um, and, and so we have problems in general. Uh, the, the solution for this problem is much bigger than all the others together. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, let's try to, to find a solution uh, for the interaction. W what interactions do we know? Let's uh, consider about it. We have interactions like, like the gravitation. Gravitational force, we have accepted, is uh, mediates mass particles. And ma mass particles are interacting with these gravitational forces. Well, this is what we know. But it is a, a static interaction because um, if I'm jumping on the, on a measurement device for the mass for my um, in the bathroom, then then you see it will not show the movement if I jump very quick. At the end, it is standing still. It's at the at the zero point, mm -hmm. so that it is absolutely a static measurement device, a static force, and uh, uh, this is DC. But DC is always the special case of AC with a frequency zero. And we we know about a second one, which is the electromagnetic interaction, which is in the, uh, mediates uh, charge carriers electrons and so on. And, and this is static as well, because this charge is static, it's not oscillating. Mm -hmm. But what happens if these static interactions are involved with another one which is oscillating? Maybe we are able to separate the oscillating uh, interaction from the static one. Then we have, in case of the gravitation, the levitation. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, the uh, change is so quick that in average the mass is zero. Mm -hmm. And this is a flying, mm -hmm. a flying uh, situation. And uh, normally we will have a combination of both of the levitation and of the gravitation. Um, well, the levitation Anyway, is a gra gravitational wave, gravitation wave. This is what we know that the gravitation wave exists. And um, 
And what, what happens if uh, I look at the electromagnetic interaction, uh, if we have a, an oscillating uh, solution, then I call it a resonant interaction. And we know a special case of this resonant interaction, which is called the weak interaction. The weak interaction of the neutrino radiation, because these particles are mediating neutrinos, um, uh, because the neutrinos are oscillating. They are changing the property from plus to minus. That means from one um, electromagnetic static interaction to the opposite and back again. So uh, in, in, in average it is zero, but if you uh, look at the uh, effective value, then this interaction works. Very important to accept this because uh, this resonant interaction is not uh, explained in textbook physics. Mm -hmm. So this is totally new. Levitation is uh, not well accepted, but it is. we know that uh, it is uh, existing and we are accepting this uh, um, explanation, but the resonant interaction is never uh, accepted and never uh, in use in physics. But if we use the static steady state situation, which is the special fa uh, case that the frequency is zero, then we have to accept this case as well if this uh, frequency is differs from zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the consequence? Uh, the consequence is that we get an idea what superstrings and dark matter could be. What is discussed of today. Um, if we look at the neutrino radiation, the stars and galaxy get uh, these fevers of uh, neutrinos, some call it super strings. This could explain why a galaxy, as shown here in, as a vortex, is moving in, uh, um, well, as a, as a fixed uh, system. You see, this fixed system is a problem because um, the, uh, if, if, if the whole galaxy is uh, turning, then the stars, which are far away from the center, are turning much quicker at higher speeds than those who are very close to the center. If the situation of this vortex has not, is not changing in, in the proportion. Um, but uh, this is an offense against the um, uh, Kepler's law because Kepler says that uh, by the gravitational force those um, um, planets which are close to the Sun have to be much quicker turning around the Sun than those who are far away. It's just the opposite, you see. And to explain the opposite with the rules they have accepted today, we get a lot of problems. Mm. And uh, um, this is why they try to find an answer why, why the galaxy is, to, is doing the opposite. And they said, well, we can fill up the whole, the whole space with some like dark matter nobody ever has seen, nobody has proved, but it has to be, exist so that there is a gravitational force in between all these matter and, and the uh, visible balls, uh, then the whole system filled up is turning as one fixed um, element. This could be a solution, but it's totally postulated. Nobody ever has proved this idea, mm -hmm. and it, it sounds strange. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It is the idea of dark matter. But uh, if, if we say the neutrino radiation, is is intermediate or is is mediated is uh, is moving from one to the other then this could be an answer and uh, that the neutrino is describing what dark matter is is describing what the super strings are which are connecting such stars far away to the center so that they do not disappear in space okay um, we have uh, or we could find a gap to what is discussed today. Um, the interaction of the neutrino 
uh, with this resonant interaction reaches m many decimal power beyond the gravitation. Uh, we know that it is far beyond the gravitational force and uh, this is why we have a new relation, we can say relation, if you calculate it for the electron, uh, what the force of uh, the gravitation is, of the mass of the electron is, in relation to the uh, force of the um, Coulomb force of the uh, charge, then uh, electrically charge, then you see that this relation is nearly the same you have if you compare the um, solar system with the whole galaxy. So you can say the solar system is the gravitational force, where the gravitational force is working, where the Kepler's laws are more or less uh, correct, uh, compared to the whole galaxy, where only uh, electrical oscillating, electrical interactions are uh, working, and uh, uh, so this is why you nearly have the same relation if you compare this. Um, so the neutrinos close the cosmic energy circle, or we can say nature is a very good example if we want to find a technical solution for new te technologies. So what is the result of, of uh, my ideas? I, I, show, I show you a, a cosmic loop um, which is using these nature's laws of eating and being eaten. Here in the center we have a black hole and the black hole um, is supporting uh, some stars and the sun with the cosmic, that means very strong and very quick uh, radiation, neutrino radiation, and they, these uh, suns and stars supply um, the Earth and other planets with weak solar radiation because they, the sun and the stars are using the neutrino radiation for shining, for growing, and for radiating. That means they interact um, with this uh, radiation and uh, the radiation is getting slower, so some small part is uh, three, uh, four percent is producing antimatter and the stars and the sun is sh are shining um, and radiating light and uh, the rest, um, which are 96 percent, um, are produced uh, to matter so that they are growing and uh, the rest which is slowed down but has not metallized this is the solar radiation and this is a weak radiation very slowed very much slowed down so this is supporting the earth with energy and the the earth even is doing the same uh, so that um, the earth is as well uh, growing, expanding, is as well radiating and even shining. Shining, well we don't see it because of the crust, uh, that it, it is, uh, there's a lot of light inside, mm -hmm. uh, but um, some, some radiation from the sun is coming out of the earth again and this is what we call, call the um, earth radiation and this radiation from the earth is in the biosphere is the energy of life that means it is uh, uh, supporting the earth and especially the plants and the human beings and the animals organ with energy. energy yeah we could, may call it organ energy whatever it, there are a lot of names uh, which uh, are available um, because a lot of scientists have looked at some special properties of neutrino radiation um, but uh, these uh, expressions are only for one special idea and one special property not for the whole neutrino. A neutrino is more than only um, um, well, um, a tachyon or what uh, Feynman was uh, uh, talking about or Orgon, what Willem Reich was talking about. Okay, this is the energy of life. And you see what happens at the end is that the sun 
together with, with the planets is dropping into the black hole and is accelerated till all the particles mm -hmm. have a speed more than speed of light and then they change into the property into a neutrino and then they are uh, spread again all over the stars and they use it um, to grow and to shine and so on. Short question to the Earth radiation. Are the auroras also connected with that? Who is Aurora? No, no, no. no. The, the, uh, the shining in, in, in the north part of, of the atmosphere, this is the solar wind. And the solar wind is uh, using the matter, uh, the particles from the sun. It's only less than 1% mm -hmm. the sun is radiating. So this is only very few energy. So let's have a look at the neutrino um, power to give some ex examples how to use it in practical converters. And if we want to learn from space, from uh, the Earth, how the Earth is doing it, uh, then we have to try to reproduce the conditions if we are interesting, interested in mm -hmm. a neutrino converter. So what do we have? We have a plasma, which is under high pressure. This is the situation in the center of the Earth. So if you are producing a plasma under high pressure, this is one condition. But is that possible here on, on the surface? Like Not the same pressure, but high pressure means more than the atmospheric pressure we have. Mm -hmm. At low temperature, mm -hmm. not high temperature, at low temperature, um, but at high frequency uh, to find the resonance. And, um, well, uh, we in, in uh, electrical engineering we speak about the derivation from the uh, voltage to time which has to uh, reach a very high value mm -hmm. then this could be used to well to produce something like a high frequency um, higher than our uh, semiconductors are um, uh, able us well an example I can give you some examples one example um, is the expanding Earth. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But there are other examples as well. Uh, solar luminous sense. What is that? Uh, the solar luminous sense is if you are producing a pressure wave to one point, where there is water, uh, from all sides, then at, in, in the center of this pressure wave there is produced um, are produced bubbles and light. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, why they call it solar luminous sense. That means uh, it has to do with light and with sound. Is there an example which everybody knows? Well, this is uh, de well developed uh, in, at universities and a lot of PhDs uh, were uh, trying to reproduce this effect. It's, uh, I've reproduced it in my laboratory as well, so it's very easy to do. Um, and and the, But it's interesting because it's not explained that you get light and bubbles. Now we know what happens. There is an interaction with the neutrino radi radiation and the neutrino radiation is producing electrons, that means we get bubbles, which are gas, gas, yeah, gas bubbles. On the other hand, we get some positrons, antimatter, and what are they doing? They are producing light. Only 4%, but it's enough to see. So this is a typical application for uh, neutrino power. Uh, the, the next uh, would be lightning. Lightning means in in nature, if, if uh, you have lightning, if you have uh, clouds, uh, we know that the energy which is received on, on the surface of the Earth in the laboratory is more than uh, the uh, electrons had been in the cloud before. Oh, really? Many more. You know so, that? Yes. 
so that the lightning is collecting energy. <laughs> and it is an Im uh, implosion because you know that uh, normally the air is not a conductor, is an insulation. Mm -hmm. Perfect insulation it is. But what happens if, if we have lightning? Then uh, something is contracting the vortex very, very much so that there is a pressure wave or pressure produced mm -hmm. which, is, which is changing the property of the air particles into plasma. And these plasma particles are condensed, very high condensed, and then they are interacting with the neutrino radiation and electrons are produced. Well, we know some uh, antimatter particles are produced as well. This is why uh, you always observe light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's the light coming from, mm -hmm. you see. This is from the neutrino interaction, that we get light, that we get sound, so it could be comparable with the solar luminescence as well. Hmm. And uh, then electrons are produced and you get more electrons received than in the cloud had been before. 10,000 times more, so many more. In, it's an interesting uh, example. And the next example I want to explain is the railgun. The railgun mm -hmm. is an interesting uh, construction uh, that had been developed by uh, the uh, military. Uh, United States. Yes, in the United States. Um, they have uh, constructed a railgun and this picture uh, was uh, available in internet uh, from the NASA. And uh, they measured a very, very high efficiency. Mm -hmm. And what we see over from unity, uh, over unity, yes. Uh, so that uh, over unity of uh, twenty four thousand, which is really tremendous. Mm -hmm. What what we see if we look at this picture is that there is a plasma produced, and that the plasma is shining. A lot of light is produced as well. Mm -hmm. And but what we do not see in the picture is what happens to the um, slide up to the uh, projectile um, uh, which is used. Uh, I can show you a picture what is uh, behind this idea which was uh, for the Star Wars for the uh, SDI mm -hmm. yeah. it was produced. Um, here you see what is behind. It is called Ampere's Bridge. Ampere's Bridge is standard technology principle um, which is using the Lorentz force just to accelerate such a pro projectile um, over uh, two, two sliders. The two sliders are um, excited by uh, electrical impulse um, that was collected before um, by high voltage uh, capacitors uh, from from the solar uh, panels and uh, photovoltaic panels, so that uh, uh, this is the energy which is available in space. Uh, so if you have, if you want to, uh, to have the war not on on the earth, what makes sense uh, uh, that they don't have it on the earth? There's no space for for war, as we know. Uh, but um, if they want to play, play, then maybe in this in the sky. Um, or even it's better to, to, to leave it. Uh, what was at the end the result when you see when, when nobody was uh, um, participating at that war uh, because the Russians uh, needed the money for something else. Um, and uh, this is why we, we now have this uh, uh, sky war or whatever on the computers and, and, and they are now playing and this is much better. So, okay, um, uh, and this system was not used anymore. And this is why it was uh, supported and was uh, printed in internet, published for about half a year. Oh, yeah. uh, at that time, all my students were um, 
electricized uh, <laughs> to see what happens and to reproduce the system. They all wanted to reproduce it because it was tremendous. You describe it already in the book from yes. 2000 with Johannes von Butler. Yes, I have it in the book and I have it in my uh, collection of, of ideas of, uh, mm -hmm. which is called neutrino, um, uh, which, is, which is called scalar waves. Mm -hmm. uh, in that book I have these uh, things explained very clear. So, what happens? The Ampere's bridge is well accepted. It is uh, the force uh, to uh, to a cable, uh, where which is in a, in a magnetic field, and uh, uh, which is uh, excited by by currents. Then it is moving. Every motor, electric motor, is working by this system, by the Lorentz force. So this is well, well accepted, but. Here we have had an effect which is beyond uh, this effect. And so I try to explain what happens. The energy was uh, coming from the neutrino radiation. Here you see uh, the high voltage capacitor and the switch. If I switch on, uh, then the rails, um, the currents are running through the rails and, the, and, and through the slider. But what happens is, if I switch on, the change of the voltage is very quick, the du to uh, divided to dt, to the time. Uh, so then you get a polarization over the slider, on the one side plus, on the other side minus. This polarization is interacting with the neutrino radiation in our environment, that means those neutrinos, which are at that time minus charged, they go to plus, and those who are positive charged go to minus. And what happens is that this neutrino radiation is, or these particles, neutrino particles, uh, are um, accompanying, uh, are going w with the electrons through the slider. Some are not even going through the slider, some are going around the slider. Is it important how much the distance is between the sliders? It's all important, but nobody has ever thought about it or has calculated because they have had no idea what happens. <laughs> so all, all the rebuilt systems of uh, tabletop uh, railguns were not walking, uh, uh -huh. working. Uh, as a lot of u universities in America have tried to reproduce it. Even so the same proportions? No, no, no. no. Uh, the, the proportions are so big, uh, it's military, mm. it's, a, it's a gun. Mm. And this is why they, they have had no, the, not the funds. Mm. Uh, billions of, of, of dollars, this is too much. Do we well, know how much the distance is in the railgun between the two sliders? Yes, but you see, this, all this is not so important. To, to know all the exact, we, what we need to know is what is physics behind. Mm -hmm. And you see, my explanation is that these polarization of the slider is uh, interacting with the neutrino radiation and the particles are used to help the electrons to uh, accelerate the slider mm -hmm. and they help as well for polarizing so it's even more polarized and it's more collected and it's more accelerated and this is even more polarized and so on so that this system is absolutely unstable. Swinging up? It's swinging up. It's unstable. It's Exponential? Not yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why when they were using only few power, they have had no effect, no effect, no effect, and suddenly uh, all, all these uh, rails had been destroyed and everything was, uh, well, <laughs> too crashed. much power. It was too much power, so it is. Mm -hmm. So they have to renew everything and repeat it, and then they have found out that this system is doing something they have not understood. Okay, this could be an explanation. I don't know whether it is co uh, the right one, but it is one possible explanation mm -hmm. from a standpoint from standard physics mm -hmm. without 
postulations. Uh, this is important because I think this is always standard physics what is working here. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we uh, may um, come back to the Earth. What is the Earth doing if the Earth follows the laws in physics? We, what we learned at school is is uh, the left hand rule or the right hand uh, rule. Uh, the one is um, is explaining a motor and the other one uh, the generator. And you see that if the fingers show in the direction of the of the currents and the magnetic field is going into the hand, then the uh, di uh, direction of movement uh, always um, is uh, up to the left hand or the right hand, up to the question whether it is the motor or the generator. And you see that this rule uh, we have to use if we want to explain what happens with the Earth is if the Earth is under th these conditions. Then we uh, see very clear that the solar wind is um, the one which is coming directly from the Sun and is transporting or mediating uh, the charged, electric charged um, particles. So that I can say the electric field is the one which is coming from the Sun. But that's not neutrinos. No, no. These are standard uh, charge carriers. Mm -hmm. Neutrino are oscillating ones. If um, the movement of the Earth is perpendicular to this electric field all around the Sun, mm -hmm. then the magnetic, the direction of the magnetic field pointer is given uh, as it is perpendicular to both, to the movement and to the electric field. And one time on the left side, you see we have the south pole on the, in the north and the north pole in the south and on the right side if it is like a generator then we have the north pole uh, up and uh, the south pole down and you see that uh, the, the magnetic pole of the earth is the only one that has the ability to change because this, the uh, solar wind or the particles never will change. You made a pole shift or what it change? This is what I want to explain at the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. Let's uh, think first what happens in physics. Mm -hmm. What happens is that if the, if the, um, um, the Sun is producing a very very strong field so that the Earth is acting like a motor and the Sun is the generator. If we have this situation then we have the picture on the left side Mm -hmm. And if the radiation from the sun is getting less, and if the radiation from the earth is even more, hmm. then we have the situation on the right side. So that from time to time, if the radiation from the sun is getting up and down and up and down, then the pole will shift from north pole to south pole and back again. This is what I want to explain. Causing a lot of trouble on Earth. Yeah, we can discuss this later. Let's have first have a look to the next film part, mm -hmm. which is explaining what happens. According to the neutrino theory of Earth expansion, the variations in cosmic radiation have also led to irregular growth of the Earth. The Sun is growing too. Astrophysicists believe that in a few billion years the Sun will expand into a red giant and will destroy all life on Earth. Do neutrinos have anything to do with that? They're certainly involved in creation and decay in the universe. Is the neutrino sea in space the ether that Einstein declared was unnecessary? Astrophysicists take a very sober view. They say the Sun will expand when its fuel for nuclear fusion is used up.
Professor Mayo sees things differently. According to his theory, the sun is already growing, exactly like the Earth and for the same reason, cosmic neutrino radiation. The sun doesn't send just light and neutrinos to the Earth, but also a wide spectrum of charged particles. Depending on the sun's activity, this solar wind is stronger or weaker. The Earth simply sails through it. The Earth's magnetic field offers us protection from this solar radiation. For years, there's been evidence that this magnetic shield is weakening. In a few thousand years, the Earth's magnetic field will reach zero, and then the polarity will reverse. There are already spots on Earth that show anomalies in the magnetic field. Quite soon, a chaotic magnetic field could develop, with several poles. Until finally, the North and South Poles change places. Scientists believe that the last reversal of polarity took place 700,000 years ago. But they calculate it should happen every 200,000 years. The next one is long overdue. Deep in the Abruzzi, in an underground hall of the Gran Sasso Laboratory, there is a gigantic machine. It's called the Neutrino Telescope. It has a thousand tons of detector fluid waiting to measure a single event the neutrino impact on the Earth of a supernova explosion. It will be a stellar explosion of enormous luminosity, something seen in the Milky Way only once in every hundred or two hundred years. Professor Mile believes that a powerful neutrino shower from a supernova explosion may have triggered the growth of the Earth. And he's afraid that neutrino radiation could influence the reversal of the Earth's polarity. Solar wind consists of charged particles that follow the electrical field of the Sun. The Earth moves vertically through this field. According to the law of unipolar induction, a magnetic field is thus induced, that is at right angles to the electrical field, and also at right angles to the direction of movement of the Earth. If an increase in neutrino radiation then leads to additional solar activity, the result will be an increase in the electrical and magnetic fields of the Earth. The magnetic patchwork we now find on Earth will disappear. The individual magnetic poles will suddenly realign themselves like bar magnets in the outer magnetic field. When the North and South Poles have swapped places following a reversal of polarity, then the same thing would happen as with a compass which is turned 180 degrees, where the magnetic needle writes itself again in the outer magnetic field. The same thing could happen to the Earth. If Mile is right, and the Earth turns itself on its head, all the waters of the Earth will be set in motion and will flood the globe. It would be a worldwide tsunami of horrendous proportions. This uh, situation uh, has always the same uh, name, the big flood, mm -hmm. uh, which is described uh, by se several um, hi history books and history descriptions uh, of uh, cultures well uh, we can we can say that um, if, if this happens if uh, the uh, not only the polarity is changing but as well the whole earth is following like compass you see mm -hmm. Th then we get problems uh, which is not explained in, in uh, these uh, film because uh, of uh, the the uh, listeners of TV <laughs> that they don't get uh, uh, afraid mm. uh, what could happen but I have to explain that it really is a problem uh, because the earth is flat at the poles and uh, the radius at the poles of the earth is about uh, 21 kilometers less than at the equator because of the turning and mm -hmm. inertial force. Um, 
that means that during this change uh, the the water will uh, disappear from from the equa uh, equation um, from the um, equator. equator and will move to the poles and then back again during that time we have a lot of earthquakes and we have a lot of um, uh, volcanoes activities mm. so during the last um, a flood there had been a volcanoes activity which is showing us that the whole change of the earth that means the polarity the magnetic uh, change of the magnetic polarity was changing during the activity of the volcanoes and by this we are able to to uh, find out that this uh, the time for the change was about two weeks not very long but we know about uh, some explanations that that the uh, till the water is uh, getting calmer again it is it needs uh, more, about one year it was the big flood the bible is talking about i think about so mm -hmm. and uh, you you see that we are warned before because if you observe uh, the uh, the turning of the earth especially the magnetic field if you see that the magnetic field is changing polarity then it's better to to pro produce a boat or to buy one today it's very simple uh, it hasn't been as simple in, in, in the past mm. but so they had to construct the boat first mm. so how to survive this is another idea and um, I have uh, produced um, a film um, uh, description or book or paper for, for a film um, in, in front of us, the big flood. What kind of concrete signs uh, should we look after to get a warning that it is now happening? Well, it's about half a year, you know, before that if, if, if the magnetic field is getting strong again. You see, the, the field is so weak, actually, mm -hmm. that no force could turn the, the world on its head. The title of the film is Turning the World on Its Head. You mm -hmm. see, as, as long as, as uh, the magnetic field is so weak, we, there's no danger. Mm -hmm. But nobody knows what happens, and this is why I said in the film, uh, that it could be quite quick that if if all these magnetic uh, elementary magnets uh, are changing or the direction in looking in one direction then it could be become very strong again in very short time mm -hmm. nobody knows who, who is observing it the magnetic field if you want you can do it in your home um, there's always a home page. No, at home because uh, the compass. Look at the compass. The compass today is is uh, very weak. It, uh, it it is influenced by. by it's how quick it's. Yes, moving. if it's very quick, if it's changing very quick and very strong, then then you see that it is getting more. Uh -huh. Or you measure it with a magnetometer. Uh -huh. it, it's possible. It's not not so difficult mm -hmm. uh, to protect yourself and and then uh, it would be good to have not only a uh, magnet it, it would be um, useful to have as well gps and if you have if you have several um, solutions at home that means magnetic uh, compass uh, a gps and uh, as a third one the um, the light compass which are which are used uh, up to Scagnac effect, which are used in, in the uh, airplanes, uh, which is uh, detecting the rotation of the Earth, then you, you see what happens. Mm -hmm. Because the first which is giving you a sign is the magnetic one. Mm -hmm. And then the others are following. Yeah. So, yeah. But you see, uh, if uh, uh, the um, water is coming, um, and uh, we have, in average, we have three kilometer water at the equation, equator. Mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, um, 
if this is running to the poles, then at the poles we will have perhaps uh, 10 kilometers or more. Could be maximum, could be 20 kilometers. But the boat could be sweeped away with this uh, wave. Uh, perhaps it's not so sh secure on the boat either. Well, on the boat you are always on the same height, which is impos uh, important uh, for the air pressure. Mm -hmm. If you are standing at the coast in Africa and the water is running away, then uh, after a short time you are three kilometers high. So if you go up to the mountain, that the the air could be uh, like like uh, eight kilometers or so, then you, then it's uh, uh -huh. you you get other problems. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, on the, the, a boat is always the best solution. Um, well, here in Sweden or in Germany as well, or in North America, there, there's nothing is remaining. Mm -hmm. That that means uh, um, if you have only a few kilometers of water, the pressure is so high that all the trees, all the wood, are uh, very quick changed into coal. This is why we have coal not, not, not on the equator. We have coal only in this region where the pressure is high enough and where we have uh, forest. Mm -hmm. uh, because, um, you know, coal uh, is uh, produced by the coal miners are producing coal by high pressure, high temperature, without oxygen. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what you have if you have kilometers of water in, on top. Well, the coal miners sometimes are talking about uh, some trees or th some wood, which is uh, under the earth where they are um, uh, digging the, uh, the coal. They, they find some, some wood um, which is uh, inside the coal and nobody knows why because if we have the pressure then everything has to change to coal. What about the, 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 the tree rests? Well, these, these are the trees which are swimming on the top of, of the water, you see. Mm -hmm. If the water is going uh, away, then they come down again. They lay on the on the surface, and then uh, there is uh, even some some stones on it, and uh, you have a layer, you have a coal layer. Is there a possibility to prevent such a catastrophe with technical or other means no. which we can do? No. You see, if the rules of physics are used by the Earth, we can't. Uh, do anything against it. No chance. Do we know how often it happened earlier? I think it happens quite often. Nobody knows exactly because the um, uh, when, if they measure at, at the middle Atlantic crust uh, the polarity of the uh, magnetic particles which are coming out if, if a new matter is produced and these uh, um, magnetic particles are showing the direction of the magnetic fields. Um, we know uh, that they are changing the polarity from time to time, but we don't know how often because we are not able to detect um, uh, more than 100,000 uh, or shorter times, 100,000 years. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of, or problem of measurement. But it could happen short time, or, or the uh, the axis is is uh, turning a bit and and, and uh, going back again. So this happens as well. It's described in the Bible. Mm. Yeah. So that the it's uh, the turning will be the same of this big ball of the, of, of the Earth, uh, and, and the sun will get up. Uh, in east and uh, disappear in, in the west again so that we don't have to turn our houses around but <laughs> if they still exist after the flood no, 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 no. <laughs> there will exist nearly nothing of our uh, of, of, of our technology of today no nothing is left from Atlantis either 
Yeah. No. So this was uh, uh, intelligent and uh, um, uh, society, and and uh, they have had a lot of uh, very high, well equipped uh, technology. Yeah. yeah. For instance, the pyramids of Giza. Yes, the Egypt have uh, renewed later on up to their um, uh, ideas and. But uh, they have been uh, been uh, left, and you see, you see, if you look at these things, you see the flood that has produced a lot of signs uh, to these uh, originally lions. They mm -hmm. have been. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of water, and you can say, if you are north of a line which is about um, the. Uh, um, but you, you know that the sun is getting up. Yeah, and down. Um, the Kais. I don't know uh, the expression in English yeah. either. Which is which is the northest point where the sun is getting up. It's twenty three uh, point. And, and it's in, in winter time. It's going mm -hmm. to the south. Mm -hmm. the, these two points, um, you have the uh, the situation that the water has the maximum speed uh, horizontal, and. Uh, uh, to the equation equator, you have it going down and, and the poles going up. So that this is the movement. And uh, well, try to find a situation to survive. But it is not so difficult because we are warmed and we are, we know that this will happen, as Noah knew as well. Mm -hmm. So he was constructing his ship. And today we have much better possibilities to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. It was mind-boggling as usual when you give a speech. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, very much. It's, it's always interesting to know what's happening on Earth and, and how Mother Earth is, is working and growing. That's very important. Thank you for being here in YTV.